Hello and welcome to Fin24. In studio today we have economist Mr. Arthur Kemp and he's chatting to us on his pre-budget 2016 predictions. Welcome Mr. Kemp. Thank you very much. Mr. Kemp, what are the indications of SONA read out by President Jacob Zuma recently? SONA is the start of the process, so it lays the groundwork. It's not meant to colour in any of the detail. The budget covers in the detail. Um, but I think the, if you look at SONA, its starting point was very interesting because it emphasised the need to first grow the economy, to grow profits, and those profits make it possible to raise taxes to spend on social spending. How possible is that? That's a very difficult thing to do. It's a long-term process. So South Africa's issue at the moment is, is growth. Uh, one of the concerns has been the performance of the state-owned enterprises the institutional capacity of those enterprises and it was interesting to me that SONA actually addressed that directly. The Treasury for a long period of time has been trying to split the commercial aspects of state-owned enterprises from the developmental aspects and saying commercial aspects should be run like commercial enterprises. It seems to me that SONA actually lays the foundation for that. Uh, it also talks about the Presidential Review Commission's recommendations being implemented. Those are very important because it speaks to the management uh, of state-owned enterprises, financial planning, capacity of those enterprises, improvement of the information systems. Uh, and if you can manage to do that, then, then you start to improve the institu institutional capacity of these organizations, which will go a long way towards contributing to the infrastructure background, because government really is, provides an enabling environment for growth. And I thought SONA addressed that, that directly. It also addressed another, a lot of other issues the private sector had been concerned about for a while, tourism, uh, broadband, although the SONA talks more about broadband in government departments, um, and issues around importation of skills if we need them. Um, one engineer can create quite a few jobs. So there seems to have been um, attention paid to these issues that the private sector has been raising for quite a while. Um, and it lays the groundwork for the budget, but the budget has got to actually colour in the numbers. Yes, how much of the colouring in do you see being positive? I think that in general this budget is going to surprise us in terms of its um, uh, austerity. <laughs> I think that we have got ourselves into a situation where unfortunately uh, following uh, last year's spike in real interest rates and combined with the fact that our economy has grown very, very slowly and is actually seems to be going, have gone into a downturn, uh, that government is paying more and more on its debt, its interest payments and its collecting less and less tax because of the low growth rate in the economy and that gap is too wide to maintain long-term fiscal sustainability. So I think this budget is going to directly address that issue and it's going to be a tough budget uh, of austerity. So you of austerity. think it's going to be a real tightening of belts? I think so. So if you, if you, if you look at um, the flavour of the SONA, that was the flavour of it. And although one talks about wastage of uh, amongst um, and spending, for example, in Parliament, all these things, one say, well, that's not a lot of money. Yet I thought that the it's very symbolic, um, and it's very symbolic that government wants to step up to the plate and look at it, its own wasteful expenditure and begin there. Um, and I thought that that, although we're not talking about large amounts of money in the grand scheme of the budget, it lays the foundation. It lays the foundation. Yes. It lays the foundation uh, for the ordinary South African consumer in terms of the austerity measures which I think every household is going to have to put in place. I'm afraid this budget, uh, it's, it, we've been talking about it, times are tough for consumers for a long time, uh, but it speaks to the problem that South Africa finds itself in, uh, as I've sketched with, with our fiscal policy, uh, and that has implications for the entire nation. And unfortunately, this is not an environment within which we're going to thrive uh, over the next year. Arthur, what would your ideal budget look like? Well, look at the textbook and I look at examples of successful fiscal adjustment around the globe. Um, historically, uh, the textbook would say, well, uh, firstly cut total spending, but don't cut capex, rather cut consumption spending, start there. But we've also got to take into account the practical realities sometimes make it difficult to follow the textbook approach. There's no, there's no question about this. Um, the fact that we've got a 25% unemployment rate the fact that our economy is not growing and we can't collect the revenue that we would like. Um, another textbook approach would be when you're collecting revenue, rather improve the efficiency of tax collection. Yeah. The, the problem is if the economy is not growing at all, you've probably got to raise taxes. Yeah. 
And so I think that those two realities mean that we're going to actually change the tax re regime, raise taxes, um, and at the same time, um, unfortunately, uh, when it comes to cutting spending, you can't just slash spending because that actually does have negative feedback effects into a very weak economy. So you've got to be very careful as to how you do that. Importantly, what you do want to do is maintain your capital expenditure. What about VAT? Everybody is speaking about VAT. Everybody is crossing their fingers that there will not be an increase in the VAT rate. But what about VAT? What are your predictions on VAT? If I had to predict, I can't predict the future, but if I had to guess what the minister would do, I think he wouldn't raise VAT in this round. Mm -hmm. I do think VAT is on the table for some point in future years. Um, it's, it's, it's a very easy tax to collect. Um, it 1% increase gives you, you know, depending on, 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 on how you do your calculations and the sort of feed through that firms pass on, but you could get up to 20 billion rand from a 1% increase. So it seems like a very quick, easy solution. But again, in an environment that the consumer is struggling, uh, that does mean uh, obviously more out of his pocket, less real disposable income for the consumer. It's also seen as a regressive tax. It's not necessarily necessarily regressive, um, but uh, because of the exclusions and the zero ratings. But if you were to introduce it, if I could just add that, I think that you would have to compromise elsewhere. You would have to look at um, uh, social grants. You would probably, in recent years, they've been constrained to cost of living increases. You might have to increase those in real terms because such a large component of the poor consumer's basket is food. Is the food. And so you, you, you probably need to, 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 to increase that in real terms. Um, and at the same time, uh, you know, you, you probably also have to realize that the minister has got quite a range of options at his disposal, um, which he could probably turn to rather than VAT at this point in time. And now for the big one. Do you think we're likely to get a debt rating downgrade? It's a tough question. I think it's an unanswerable question, and I think it's a very close call. Uh, I think it is quite important to, to differentiate between the type of debt ratings that we have. The debt rating that people are looking at for the downgrade to sub-investment grade is the foreign currency denominated debt rating, which is a small component of total government debt. Um, most debt is issued in RAND, so the, the, the RAND rating, the rating on domestic currency debt is, 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 is very important and that's actually rated a bit higher than the the rating on our foreign currency denominated debt. So while that is the case, that's a mitigating factor, um, it's also worth bearing in mind that the market has actually, to a significant or large extent, priced in the likelihood of us going down to sub-investment grade. To the ordinary South African citizen, what does that <coughs> mean? What does the downgrade mean? The downgrade, we've already seen the implications of a potential downgrade mm -hmm. because as the market anticipates that this is a possibility, the RAND sold off. Mm -hmm. And with the RAND falling very, very sharply, inflation expectations picked up. The Reserve Bank became concerned about possible inflation, so the Reserve Bank starts to respond by raising interest rates. You need a, the, to the, the fact that the RAND fell so very far in such a short space of time um, tends to suggest that it could be very inflationary. And the Reserve Bank was very concerned about that. You need a strong policy response. Part of that response is the Reserve Bank, but the major part of the response will have to be fiscal policy, which unfortunately means fiscal tightening. So you get the higher taxes, constraining of government spending. That then, of course, feeds back into the consumer space. We'll hope for the best for Budget 26, and we hope to have you back in the studio after Budget 26. Thank you. I would love to be back. It's a pleasure.